Okay, so I'm planning on making some sourdough bread tonight, um, and or at least starting it. So I'm gonna make my starter this morning. I'm gonna do a fresh batch of starter uh, so that it's all ready to go for this evening. I need 90 grams of starter for my recipe. Um, so I'm gonna actually make some extra. Um, I need to refill what I've got uh, so I have some more in storage. Planning on doing some classes, so I'm gonna be giving a little bit away. Um, so the way I do the starter, basically you gotta have a scale. Uh, I'm gonna tear my scale to zero, and then I've got starter, I've got flour, and then I've got water, and I've warmed my water up in the microwave uh, to 100, 102. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of warm to the touch, okay? Um, and that's because the starter that I have was in my fridge uh, and it's already cold, so I want to balance that out. Um, so the water, um, I like to use filtered water that's got rid of the uh, chlorine. Um, so you can use bottled water also. Um, I don't like to have a lot of chlorine uh, in this recipe at all, uh, so I'm going to um, recommend uh, using filtered water. Um, so what we're going to do is basically one-third starter, one-third flour, one-third warm water. Uh, and you can use any proportion. I'm just going to use grams. Excuse me, I'm going to use ounces, and I'm going to do uh, four ounces of each one. So we'll start out with the starter. And you can see this one is actually kind of bubbly already, which is good. So this is pretty fresh. Um, starter. I probably could use this uh, directly for my bread tonight, but I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do a new batch. So we want four ounces. That's two. Let's see what we get here. That's going to be pretty close. 3.9. Four. Okay. Then I'm going to do uh, four ounces of uh, the bread flour. And the way I like to do this, let's zero it, is to use about three and a half ounces of white, white flour. And then I always put in some wheat flour. I think wheat uh, or rye. Uh, adds some extra little nutrients to your starter that you don't necessarily get from more refined white flour. Um, and the flour that I like using for all this uh, is King Arthur's uh, bread flour. It has a very high gluten ratio um, and that's what you need to have a really good um, dough that really holds together well. All right, so then we're gonna do our four ounces of water. Yeah, tiny bit more. That won't hurt anything. And then we're going to mix this all up. So by using the warm water and the cold starter, uh, we're gonna end up probably pretty close to room temperature. And that's gonna be ideal for the bacteria to kind of start proliferating and getting this going. All right, so that looks pretty good. So then, whoo, that was great. Um, so then what we'll do is just cover this with a little saran wrap. And just let that sit on our counter until tonight. So that's all for now. That's all we got to do. 
Okay, so this is the new batch of starter uh, that I'm using made for tonight. This is the old starter. When I say old, I made this yesterday. Um, and th the reason I did it yesterday and then again today is because what I normally do is I have this stored in my fridge. This is my kind of home base starter and that's kind of stuck on there. Um, after it sits, sits in the fridge for uh, a week or two, um, you'll see that it kind of gets very flat. It's not bubbly anymore. And sometimes if you leave it for three or four weeks, it develops a brown layer of liquid on top, which is actually hooch. There's a little alcohol in there. Um, and that becomes very inactive in the line of the bacteria that are in there. That doesn't mean they're dead. It just means they're inactive. So you have to re invigorate them. So the way you do that is to go ahead and do a feeding uh, and then the next day do another feeding. Now if you've just baked bread within the last four or five days, like I said this morning, I probably could have just used this tonight. Um, it looked pretty good. It was nice and bubbly, um, but I elected to go ahead and make a fresh batch so that it's really, really active when we make our, our, our dough tonight. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this starter that I made yesterday and just put it back in my container and then I have plenty for my next batch down the road. If you end up with too much kind of leftover starter you can always make pancakes out of it uh, which is something that's really good butter uh, sourdough buttermilk pancakes. Um, so I'm going to stick this back in the fridge uh, and store that for long-term use. I've had this same starter now for uh, four or five years. Um, I've never, never had it go bad. Okay, so it's now about seven o'clock at night. Um, our sourdough starter just looks absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna show you here. It's incredibly bubbly. Um, looks just wonderful. Smells, smells really good too. Um, so we're gonna be ready to, to, to use this to uh, start our dough. And what we're going to do, um, the way I like to do this, I've got this uh, plastic container uh, that is made by Sterilite, uh, but you can use any kind of bowl that you can either put a lid on or, or put saran wrap over so that it can uh, stay hydrated and not dry out. Um, I like this though because it's a nice clean seal and it's easy to work with. It's round, it gives me room to put my hands in so that I can work the dough as it, uh, as it matures. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is zero this and um, we're gonna add our flour. And uh, we're gonna start with 200 grams of the uh, white uh, bread flour. So we'll get that going here. There's 100. One seventy-five. Actually, this scale is nice. I can actually pull this out so that I can kind of see better. And a little bit more than I needed. I get pretty exact with this, so that it reproduces uh, nicely. All right, then we're going to do one hundred and fifty grams of whole wheat. So it should be 350-ish. Get it up there. Okay. Uh, and then I like to add in a little bit of rye flour. Now, if you don't have rye flour, you can just add another uh, equal amount, uh, uh, portion of uh, whole wheat. And we're gonna add 50 grams so the total is going to be 400 grams of flour. Three ninety-two. Three ninety-eight. All right, so there's 400. 
And what I like to do is to just give this a quick stir just to kind of get all the different flowers all mixed together. And I'm just going to temporarily set this aside. Um, then uh, we're going to add our uh, or get our water ready. And uh, we're going to be adding uh, 620 grams of warm water. I take, took some filtered water um, and microwaved it for a few, for about nine, uh, excuse me, 50 seconds or so. So it's just warm to the touch. Um, and then we're going to add that, I'm going to zero this, and we're, we're going to add this, uh, you can see this brown stuff in here, this is um, some malt extract, um, and you can buy this uh, on Amazon, it's made by this company, Brees, uh, and this gives the, the bread a nice flavor, but if you don't have this, you can use any kind of carbohydrate, Honey is a great example, and all this does is going to help activate our bacteria, uh, give it a little something else to, to kind of chew on when they, when they first start to get going. Um, so I put 15 grams of the malt extract, and again, you can use 15 grams of honey. Uh, then we're going to add our water, and we want uh, 620 grams of water, so I'm going to zero this. And we're going to add this. Hopefully I got enough in this to do it. 600. There's 620. And I'm just going to set this aside for a second and let that kind of dissolve. And then we're going to bring back our bread, I mean our flour, and we're going to add now 90 grams of our starter that we made. So I'm gonna take some of this nice fresh starter. And add 90 grams. Directly on top. There's 40. That's 84 or 83. Let's see if I get close here. Yep, there's 90, so that's perfect. Now I'm not going to throw this away. This uh, is going to go back into my jar and uh, put it back in the refrigerator later on. So now I'm going to take my water and my uh, malt and I'm just going to mix this up because it gets really sticky on the bottom so I just use my finger to mix it up and dissolve that a little bit better before I put it in with the flour alright so that looks pretty good um, I'm going to take this off the scale at this point because I really don't need this scale anymore. I'm going to put this to the side. And now I'm just going to pour in my water. There's nothing magic about this. I try and get all the last little bit of this malt dissolved in there. And again, like I said, you can use honey. I've done it with honey but I just like the flavor of the, the malt a little bit better. All right, now we're just gonna mix this up and start forming our dough. Get all that um, starter kind of blended in. And this is gonna be really, really wet and sticky because we're gonna be adding more flour in just a minute, but we wanna get all this dissolved and get all these ingredients kind of mixed together nicely while it's still a kind of really liquidy kind of material. So we're going to just stir it up. And 
Now there's no activation that like if you're using yeast, you got to activate the yeast and all that stuff. But the, the bacteria in the starter is already activated. It's, it's probably starting to already get happy. Um, nice warm environment, extra carbohydrate. We like happy bacteria, right? So there we have it. You can see kind of really liquidy, right? You're not gonna be able to move this around with your hands at all. Now, some people say, oh, when are you gonna put in this, this salt? Well, I got my salt, but we're gonna put in the salt after we let all the flour uh, come together and, and hydrate really well, start forming nice little gluten bonds, and then we'll add in the salt kind of as a last step. All right, so that looks pretty good now. So now we're gonna add the rest of our flour, and for this, I've got uh, 450 grams of the white uh, bread flour. We're just going to dump this in. So if you do the math on this, you end up with a dough that's about 72% hydration. So for a really good sourdough, you kind of want to have and, and that hydration is the amount of water to flour. So 72% water to flour. 620 grams of water. To the flour. And this is a really sticky dough, okay? So again, not like a lot of stuff you're gonna turn out and just start kneading with your hand, because this is gonna be a, a, not a lot of kneading that we have to do, which is really great. So this is an overnight recipe that I've perfected. And you can see this is now starting to really look like a really raggedy dough, right? Um, and I'm using a fork for this part. Uh, some people use a wooden spoon. Um, I don't think it really makes too much difference what you use as long as you kind of get all these ingredients mixed together. And you can see it sticks to my hands. It's really sticky. You don't want to start trying to manipulate this too much with your hands at this point in time. Just keep working it with your fork or your spoon, kind of getting it all mixed together. Now, could you do this in a big mix master? Uh, yes, you could, um, but I hate cleaning up all that stuff. Uh, and for this, I really don't need it. It's it's pretty pretty coarse. I'm not really doing anything too magical, um, and I'm not kneading this dough. I'm just really kind of stirring it together. So for a lot of the other breads that that I do and pizza doughs and stuff, yes, I use the mix master to to kind of quicken things up a bit, but the time I, I save, I end up having to spend that time kind of cleaning it all at, at the end. Okay, so now we're starting to get a dough that's really sticky, it's hydrating up, and it's all coming together really nicely. I just kind of scrape these edges as I go just to kind of get all that mixed in there. But any little bit isn't going to change anything at this point in time. All right, so now we can start adding our salt. And I got 16 grams of salt. And uh, for this, I like using sea salt or kosher salt. You don't want to use iodinized salt. Um, it adds a weird flavor. Um, so iodine is good for us. In small quantities but for bread baking we do not want it so I'm just gonna put a little bit of that salt in kind of just stir it in there a little bit and then we'll sprinkle a little bit more on kind of in thirds I just kind of do it in thirds I don't think there's anything magical about it but i read somewhere that if you put too much salt in too soon in the process before you hydrate your dough 
that it can start screwing up the the bonds that form in the gluten now i've done it and i really didn't notice that much of a difference but ideally this is what you do and sprinkle the last third on Now we're going to be moving this dough around a lot um, as time goes on, so we don't have to worry about the salt all kind of being in one place. But I do like to just give it a kind of quick stir, kind of work from the bottom, pull it over the top. And you can really feel it starting to really get thick and sticky and really holding together now. All right, so that's pretty good at this point in time. So what we're gonna do is just leave this now for about 20 minutes or so, and then we're gonna come back and start doing something called stretch and folds. Now, um, and stretch and folds kind of <clears throat> take the place of all the kneading and stuff that grandma and stuff used to do. Um, and it works great for these kind of breads. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of let everything sit, kind of pack it down into a little ball um, put my lid on and again if you don't have a, a, a lid you can put saran wrap on and we're just going to leave that now for about 20 minutes okay so it's been 20 30 minutes enough time for me to clean up the kitchen a little bit and uh, get the garbage out so Yvonne won't be mad at me and uh, we're going to take a look and see how this is starting to look oh that looks great so far you can see it's already kind of starting to flatten out a little bit um, so we're going to start doing these little stretch and fold things that I talked about. And there's lots of different ways to do this. But first off, right now this dough is very sticky. So if you touch it, it's going to really stick to your hands. Um, so the best way to prevent that is to actually just take some water and wet your hands. Adding a little bit more water to this is not going to hurt anything. So I just kind of wet my hands in the sink. And that allows me to manipulate this dough without it sticking to my hands. So I can just go around here, kind of just loosen it up from the bottom. There we go. Now I'm gonna take these little corners, and I'm just gonna pick them up and stretch them. You can see how it's starting to get that nice stretchy look to it. Now I'm just gonna fold it over the top. And I'm gonna pick another edge, nice big stretch, fold it over the top. Another edge. And what we're doing is we're starting to form some elongated gluten strands that are going to give our bread later on some really nice consistency, enough to trap air and hold it so we get a really nice rise. But you can see how this is already starting to get nice and smooth looking, even just after just letting it sit there for 20 minutes and doing nothing. All right, so we're just going to roll this in. Use my other hand a bit. Kind of roll it up into a ball. Just like that. And we're going to leave it now for an hour. We'll look back at you in an hour. Okay, so it's been another hour. And uh, I'm going to take a look and see how we're coming along here. Oh, this is really starting to look good. Um, so we're going to do another stretch and fold. So again, I'm going to wet my hands. Just go around and kind of loosen up these edges. And you can see how non-sticky this really is now. And then look how, look how this is starting to get. You can almost, almost get a little window, window pane effect there, which is really starting to form that nice gluten. Stretch this out and just lay it over the top. And I just go around and do this, kind of doing what it gives me. I want to try and form it into a ball each time a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of form it up into a little ball, create a little surface tension there. Nothing fancy. Just kind of roll it under. There we go. And let it sit. Now you can leave it 
sit like this now overnight. Um, if you can get one more stretch and fold in before you go to bed, that would be ideal. Even if it's only 30 minutes from now, uh, that's fine. I'm still pretty early. Uh, you can see actually some of the gas starting to form in here. I'm getting little bubbles. Um, so you know this is the the culture is really starting to, to produce carbon dioxide. So it's actually starting to really rise a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna leave it alone and do one more stretch and fold before I go to bed. Okay, here it is uh, about an hour later, getting close to bedtime. I'm gonna just do one more stretch and fold real quick here. Boy, this dough is starting to really look good. Loosen it up. And you can see why I like this bowl because it's kind of gives me room to work. Now you could take it out and do this on a counter. So there's lots of ways to do this. All right, that looks pretty good now. I'll form this up into a little tight ball. Just kind of roll it in on itself. And in the morning, we'll see what that looks like. Looks great right now though. Okay, here it is the next morning. Um, and we're gonna see what this did overnight. It should have really puffed up and filled the whole bottom. Look at that, it's nice and smooth now. You can see how kind of puffy that is gotten. And lots of little air bubbles forming all over the place. So that's looking really perfect. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh, divide this up. Um, so I'm going to kind of loosen it, dump it out, and then divide it up. Uh, and then I'm going to put it into these other small containers to kind of just let it mature out a little bit one or two times. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Again, I'm going to wet my fingertips just a little bit this time, not a lot just to kind of really loosen it a bit. And you can see it's just a little bit stuck to the edge, but not bad. You can just get your fingers in here and just kind of loosen it from the edges. And I'm trying not to smush it down too much now. So we're gonna be real gentle. Look at these bubbles. That looks really good. All right, trying to get underneath it some. Just to kind of loosen it from the bottom here. Okay. Of course my of course my camera battery died. So now I gotta start this over again. So we're just gonna gently get this loosened up from the bottom. And then we're gonna turn it out and see if we can get it to all dump out onto our counter here. side so there's pretty much our dough and if you can see this is kind of the the side that was on the bottom so we're going to divide this dough in half and use it for two different loaves so I'm trying to just eyeball this for the most part pretty close um, so what we're going to do now is just kind of lay this out and I'm gonna move these pieces a little bit here. And we're gonna just, again, kind of do a little roll here. Roll them up like that. And then we're just gonna set them into these other airtight containers. So 
I'm just going to take this now gently and lay it in here. Put the lid on. Kind of the same thing here, except for I'm going to do a little something different with this. I was reading a article. Now, if you notice, I'm taking it and stretching it out to the side a little bit. But I'm not smashing it. I'm not pressing down on it anymore. All right, that looks pretty darn good. What we're going to do with this one is I've got some cheddar cheese. This is an experiment, so I have no idea if this is going to turn out. And we're just going to put some cheddar cheese down on here. Something like that. And then I've got some pickled jalapenos. And I've taken the jalapenos and um, that I pickled and I put them on paper towel and, and really pressed a lot of the moisture out of them. So we're just going to distribute these here. Also. Again, I don't really know how much. I, this is the first time I've done it, so it could be too much, too, middle, too little, but something like that. We'll see. And again, I'm going to take my dough and just kind of stretch it and, and roll it. This kind of looks like it has to go this way, so we'll see how that does. All right, and then we're going to put this now into this container and drop our lid on. We're going to let these sit here now for about a half hour, 45 minutes or so, uh, and then we're going to kind of start doing a another kind of folding, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now. It's been about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes. Um, I'm going to take this here, and we're just going to do these little folds. Again, I'm just going to wet the fingertips here a little bit. And we're not going to stretch it now. We're just going to be kind of lifting up along the edges. And we're just going to be folding this thing over here. Be kind of loosening it up just like this. There we go. What I'm going to do is kind of about a third of the way down, I'm going to lift up and then I'm going to use these two fingers to kind of fold it over. So I'm going to lift up and then use these fingers to just kind of fold it over. And just kind of do that all the way around. Just create a little surface tension here. And again, you don't want to be too rough with this at this point in time. You're just gently kind of doing these rolls more than anything else. And this is just building a little bit more surface tension in there. You can see some nice gas bubbles really starting to form. I'm going to leave that one alone. Put my lid back on, maybe. All right, we'll take a look at this one. This is the jalapeno one. I'm just gonna take it up and fold it over. Take it up, fold it over. We'll see, I'm going to do that again from this side, I think. I don't want to disturb that inner part too much. You can see it's already starting to try and poke through there a bit. 
I think that's pretty good. All right. So I'm just going to leave that again for a little bit. So it's been about 20 minutes. I'm just going to do another quick finger fold here. I'm going to come in, lift it up, fold it over, lift it up, fold it over. So just being real gentle with this dough now so that we don't break up those nice air bubbles that we're forming in there. And just creating a little bit more surface tension. So that's all I'm going to do. Give it another 20 minutes and we'll shape our dough. This one I'm going to leave just because it's already starting to kind of break. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll try a little finger fold here. See if I can tuck that underneath. It's a little trickier because it's got all the yummies inside of it. I'm trying not to get them too, too exposed here. I want to kind of fold them up underneath anyway. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. It's starting to kind of poke through there, but that's okay. I'm just going to leave it like that and we'll form our dough next. All right, so another 20 minutes and then we'll go ahead and form our doughs and put them in our batons. Okay, so I'm gonna get these uh, batons ready so we can put our bread in. Um, I just take a little flour, uh, this is rye flour, but you can use any flour, and just gently kind of sprinkle it along the edges. And this just will help prevent your dough from sticking later on. Make sure you get a little bit in the bottom. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to put cover, um, seeds or anything else on top of your dough, put it in here. And when you put your dough down, it'll stick in there nicely. Um, we're not going to do that today. I'm just going to try and get some nice crust on these. Let's get some good flour in here. And I do this over the sink because invariably it gets flour all over the place. So that should be pretty good. All right, so that's about ready. Okay, so it's time now to kind of form our loaves. It's been about another 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do at this point is to just dump this out. And I do it directly on my marble counter countertop. Um, if you don't have a, a countertop, you can use a, a, a board. Um, but uh, if you do kind of um, uh, put a little light uh, sprinkle of flour down first so it doesn't stick. Because this is still pretty sticky dough. Um, so now we're going to want to kind of shape it into our loaf. <clears throat> and there's lots of different ways to do this. Basically, I kind of do this one-third kind of uh, uh, shaping. So I'm going to take my dough. Actually, let me wet my fingers just a smidge. You don't have to do it that much anymore. Um, and just going to shape my dough. I'm just going to st stretch it into kind of a, a rectangle here. Something like that. And then I'm going to take this part and fold it over. Now the part that's down is my kind of shiny slippery side. This side is much more raw. So I'm gonna kind of flip it over and just tuck it in. And then I'm gonna turn my dough around. I'll take this edge and flip it over here and tuck it in. And then I'm just gonna tuck these corners in here. Kind of like that. And then if you just kind of roll it along with your fingertips, 
it'll create a nice tight skin on there. You can kind of see as I pull it, it, it kind of rolls along and gets a nice tight little skin forming. Not that critical. I'm gonna push it away from me here. There we go. And then we're gonna to wanna to put this side down in our, in our baton. So I'm gonna take it and just flip it over and lay it down. And that's gonna be about what I wanna do. Now, some people kind of pull these things together and uh, do something called stitching where they create even more tension on the surface by kind of pulling the, the dough tucking it down. I've not been that successful with this. It always seems to kind of pull apart again. But you can try it and see. If you can create that little extra tension there. <clears throat> I don't think it's that critical at this point. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead now. It's 66 degrees in my kitchen this morning. Um, I don't, uh, and I wanna try and help speed up this rising process. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to actually create my own warming drawer. I don't have one of those bread warming drawers that are a lot of people have in their houses, uh, but I've devised something that works really, really well. All right, that's good enough. So I'm going to come over here and I've got one of these big plastic bins. And I'm going to come over and get some hot water. And we're going to fill up this cup with hot water. And this does two things. One, it creates uh, a warm, humid environment. Uh, and at the same time, um, it prevents the dough from drying out. That humidity in there will, will help. So I'm just going to go back and just restitch this a little bit before I put it in there. All right. So I'm going to put this down, put this over the top, and then slide. my hot water underneath and you can see it's steaming already um, and that's kind of raising the temperature in there adding a lot of uh, moisture so that this bread as it rises now uh, will not dry out so in here I've got two canisters one is my lodge pot uh, which is cast iron and I like this with the round top and the other is a ceramic bread baker um, and I'll show you how these work but basically they're there just to help hold in the steam when you first start baking all right we're gonna set this to 475 and turn it on all right so here's my jalapeno loaf uh, with cheese some of it's kind of coming out the sides a little bit I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn it over. It smells good. It'll be interesting to see how this experiment goes. <laughs> you can see it's taken longer to kind of get detached from the container because I didn't uh, do that extra little fold that I did on the other one. All right. Now we want to form now kind of a a ball with this one. It's going to be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to again kind of just spread it out just a little bit here. And then I'm going to take this part that's kind of coming apart already. Got to be real gentle with this. And just kind of fold up these edges. And 
This is going to be interesting. We'll see how this turns out. <laughs> now here I'm just going to kind of put my hands in a cup shape and, and just kind of scoot it along a little bit to create that tension that's on there. I'm going to get rid of some of these little pieces that are sticking out. I just don't know what they're going to do. Don't have a lot of confidence in this so far, but we'll see how it turns out. Okay, and then I'll get my other baton that I created and just gonna flip this over and set it on in. Ooh, there's a lot of this here. Yeah. This is all gonna end up on the bottom of my loaf, so I'm gonna kind of again go through and pick this out. We'll see how this turns out. I maybe put too much in. Got to experiment. You got to try things. You know, so you don't. If you don't try things, you never know what's going to work and what's not. Afraid this cheese will burn, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna go through and just kind of pick this stuff out that's kind of poking its way out of the bread already. Don't know I gotta get every little last bit, but alright. That's probably good. We'll see how that all does. And again, you can try and pull a little stitching across in here. I don't think it's going to work with that, those ingredients in there. So it's just going to expose more. So I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And again, I'm going to put this down. We're going to let this rise now for at least an hour and a half. Uh, two hours or so, probably an hour and a half, because it looks nice and puffy already. <laughs> All right, and we'll come back and look at this in an hour and a half. Okay, so it's uh, been about an hour and a half. It's time to uh, see how these are coming along. Oh, that looks really good. And this one looks good too. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up our, our baking. Just gonna dump this out real quick. So the first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna dump this loaf uh, out onto a piece of parchment paper. That's gonna make it easier for me to transfer this into my uh, baking vessel. I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and just trim off these little edges. I found it fits better when you do this. And we can get rid of those. And I'm just going to transfer this closer to my where I'm going to actually be doing the transfer. Okay. Then we're going to go over here to the oven and take out my preheated. Now these have been sitting in here for at least an hour, nice and hot. Gotta wear mittens and gloves for this. So this is the only kind of tricky, dangerous part per se. All right, so back to this part. So what I'm gonna do is take my parchment, lay it right over the top like this Try and keep it somewhat centered, flip it over. And there's our, our loaf, and that looks really good. So we're gonna put some scores on here. 
And you can do this any way you want to, but I'm just going to do some simple scores for this one. So we're just going to start over here and just do four kind of stripes. And this allows the bread as it bakes. I should do this in one fell swoop, but I, my blade's getting a little dull. Okay, so now I've got nice scores about a quarter inch deep. I'm going to go ahead and get my gloves on. Take this lid off. And got a little sprayer. And I'm just going to spray this with a little water. That helps actually a night develop a nice crust. And it also adds a little bit more moisture so that it steams really nicely so I get a good rise. I'm going to drop this right in. Put my lid back on. Make sure it's on there correct. And then we're going to slide this back into the oven. And at the same time, I'm going to take out my cast iron one for the other, other loaf. Okay, so here's our other loaf. Get our parchment paper that I pre-cut here. Lay this on top. Flip it over. Nice. And I'm just going to take a little, little rice flour on this one. And this will, I'm going to try a little fancy pattern on this and just see if we can make a really cool looking design. So I'm just going to sprinkle this with a little rice flour. There we go. Get a little marker string here. Just to kind of lay out some quadrants. All right. And then I'm just going to make some little scores. Kind of this around and last one kind of creating some symmetry here so these are about 1 8 inch scores these are really not meant to be the big scores that actually produce the um, good rise and then we're going to score it quarter inch deep this way didn't quite get there enough okay so that should hopefully get that to open nicely I'm going to just wet this down again with my sprayer get a nice little crust and get my gloves and drop this into the lodge here and we'll see how this experiment turns out I'm not convinced but you never know Put our lid back on, and then we'll stick this back into the oven. Then we'll bake these for about 20 minutes at 475. Your bake timer is done. Alexa, stop. 
All right, let's uh, go ahead and take these lids off and see how we're coming along. Oh, that looks really good. And we'll take a look at this one. This one, I'm, like I said, a little bit of an experiment. Not convinced yet that this is going to be turning out great, but we'll see. Oh, it actually looks pretty good. All right. So now we're going to drop this temperature down to uh, 375, something like that. And I'm just going to push that in just a little bit more and we'll bake this for another 15 minutes. Okay, so now we're going to see what these look like. Make sure the crust is good. Ooh, that looks pretty perfect. That looks pretty perfect. That one's good, I think. This one's quite interesting, so we'll see what this looks like when we take it out. Didn't rise quite as much as I thought it would, but... All right, so that's what they look like kind of in the in the bowls. Just be a little careful. You can grab these little papers now and lift them out. Well, that one didn't lift out right, so. Get a little scooper here. Help pick it up. And we're gonna put these over here on a little warming rack. It actually rose pretty good. So I think in general those turned out really nice, like the pattern interested to try this one this is basically just our our standard loaf um, looks pretty good um, so hopefully we'll see how these end up tasting now you don't want to cut these ooh, a little bit i think that's due to the cheese kind of causing that little extra darkening there i think it'll be okay um, you don't want to cut these too soon you want to let them really cool for at least 30 minutes or so Otherwise, they'll be kind of gummy inside. Uh, sourdough just needs to kind of cool, let a little bit more of that moisture escape, uh, and that crumb then will, will, will solidify and, and be much better if you just let it cool. I know it's hard not to eat hot, fresh bread, but sourdoughs especially are good if you just leave them alone for a little bit. All right, if you have any questions, let me know.